Welcome Internet to Psychoanalytic Talk and today I want to talk about a very old concept which basically has gone off the grid kind of completely but I kind of have a soft spot for it basically because I've learned it years ago and basically also because I find the concept really interesting uh, so Without any further ado, the concept is Failure Neurosis by René Laforgue, which is a French psychiatrist and psychoanalyst. So he theorized that concept in the late 30s. So to give you a little bit of context, he was one of the pioneers of psychoanalysis in France. And to my understanding, he even met Freud once. So, I mean, he was really into psychoanalysis at a point where basically it wasn't necessary in fashion per se or at least not an explosion that happened after the war and with the arrival of Lacan. We're talking about a a time in French psychoanalysis where it was before Lacan, or at least before the um, boom he had experienced as a professional. That's for the um, the little quick review of the context. And basically, it's... um, I like the concept because it kind of gives a word for people because failure neurosis is basically a syndrome, virtually, of people who, even though everything could have been done for them to succeed, they fail. And it isn't um, the case of people giving their best, really working hard and really striving and just falling short and failing. It's not about that. And it's not, 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 neither about people who basically um, tried to do everything, tried to succeed, failed and fell into depression. It's not that either. So it's neither people that tried everything nor people that fall into depression. It's about people that could have achieved it, have failed and take enjoyment in the process of failing itself. So it's very, very peculiar in the fact that those people do not necessarily truly seek to succeed, not in any real way. And it goes even so far where even if those people are given everything possible, everything, like there's no way with any amount of effort, that even the lowest of the low, that they would fail, they still fail because there is a measure of inner sabotage which creates a um, spiral where they're gonna basically uh, destroy um, the steps that would make them succeed turning the success into abject failure sometimes and that fundamental failure comes from the fact that a part of their ego enjoys the process of failing it's not failing to kind kind of learn and build better. It's not failing faster, right? It's about failing as an end game itself, with nothing beyond it. And I find that very interesting, as it puts into perspective the fact that success is not something that is consequence free. Of course, we all have in mind the people the same, suffering from success, but it's not even that, it's kind of suffering from the inner image of success. So it's not even success itself, it's the idea of success. And that's very interesting because for René Laforgue, that's where basically the superego comes in and evaluates or judges the ego as being insufficient, incompetent or not good enough for that level of achievement and that therefore it, the superego pressures the ego into failure by repetition, by sabotage, by basically procrastination, you name it. I mean, there's billions of ways of f- to fail a task, but the idea is there, is that basically it's a union between a superego that just deems the ego uh, not good enough 
and the ego taking pleasure into the pain and suffering of failure. And here it's very important for me to just state this, that basically when I mean ego here, of course I mean the Freudian ego, but more than that, I mean the individual themselves. And that enjoyment of failure, of course, is unconscious, but in certain cases it might even be conscious that there is something of a pleasure in one's self-destruction or the fact of not achieving what one should. And I think that that's very interesting because it can be very true that some people are stuck in a pattern where they're going to repeat failure after failure, learning nothing in the process and just in a way getting some form of enjoyment because then they can use that failure as a way to justify their personality, their frustrations, their projections, their envy, and so on and so forth. And this, to me, is a very important and fundamental concept, even though it has kind of had its life and it was not very successful. The idea itself, I think, is like genuinely interesting. And from my understanding, but don't quote me on this, right, uh, Freud himself was interested in those types of patients that basically had everything to succeed and did not. And that's something that the fog used to basically build his whole fairy. And it was the case of a lot of French psychoanalysis. Because in France, psychoanalysis kind of works like you find something that Freud like barely mentioned like once and then you, whole, you put a whole fairy forward for it. I mean, uh, I'm kind of exaggerating, but there's kind of a bit of truth into that. Anyway, to come back to failure neurosis. For me, it's a very, very important and interesting concept for so many reasons. Because A, it shows that even though fail failure is seen nowadays as all a step to, for growth, or sometimes even as... Um, something that's necessary and I fully agree with that some people don't use it as that they use it as a self mutilating uh, tool in order to gain um, masochistic pleasure with that suffering and that's something I think is still very valid in the nowadays however nowadays we wouldn't call those people necessarily neurotics I think that we would call them more people with borderline organizations as they sometimes have masochistic components to their personalities or even sometimes uh, more perverse in the, um, in the way of transforming what is good into what is bad. And basically I find that to be a um, very rich concept that has gone completely under the radar. And it's gone, especially in the, under the radar in uh, Anglo-Saxon countries, from my understanding, because psychoanalytic schools of thought, like, for example, the British uh, Psychoanalytic Society, uh, led by Glover at the time, or Glover, basically rejected it, saying that the French always want to create little concepts here and there. They all want to put syndromes everywhere, or little quirky like um, subtypes but they don't have a unifying fairy for all of them so he was ve very criticized and also his book was ref refused for translation from my understanding of it and that explains why completely gone under the radar in the anglo-saxon countries but i still find the concept kind of enjoyable and it does represent a clinical reality and I think in the era in which we are it is very important to continue to have those types of ideas that some people enjoy it and to try and perhaps now if we were to bring it in the modern day uh, perhaps think of it as an extension of the death drive as one manifestation of the death drive as those people basically um, are sabotaging their lives and destroying what what they have 
And that's something that I think Conor Fox could have gone for, like in the case of, if we were to think about this, his theory of the superego, pressuring the ego, might be very accurate. But then is it really an Oedipal superego, or is it more of a, like Melanie Klein stated it, an early superego, i.e. a more repressive, severe and unforgiving superego? Because it kind of seems to me that that's where, that's where it is for them. I mean, if they're going to have something that just judges the ego as poor and ine inefficient or insufficient, well, then that shows that there is a massive um, issue between the two instances. And all of these reasons made me really appreciate the concept of failure neurosis and something that even though I don't necessarily think with that tool, I just like the idea of it. And also because um, bringing things that are a bit passe can be, can be fun, especially because um, I, I'm not sure a lot of you have heard of the concept. So anyway, feel free to tell me if you've heard about the concept in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.